All right, thanks for watching. And today we're gonna do the unbelievable. We're gonna evaluate this integral. Yeah, so you're in for a treat. We're gonna evaluate the integral of cosine of one plus cosine of x. And already this is hard to evaluate, but let's multiply this by cosh of sine of x. Oh my gosh. And the way we're going to do this is using complex analysis. And the cool thing is, usually complex analysis deals with residues and some weird contour integration. Today, we will not use any residues. So be prepared. First of all, I'm claiming that this function, right? So take, so maybe step one. Take this function, cosine of 1 plus cosine of x times cosh of sine of x. And let's make this even more complicated. Let's add an imaginary part here. So let's go to the complex world. So cosine of 1 plus cosine of x cosh of sine of x, and then let's do a minus i sine of 1 plus cosine of x, cinch of sine of x. And of course, to make this true, notice the real part here is the same, and while well, the imaginary part here is zero, so this becomes true if we require that the real part of this function is this function. And in fact, this is true, you know, because the real part of a plus bi is the same thing as a, or a equals to the real part of a plus bi. So this function was horrible enough, I made this even more horrible, but there is a point to this because I'm claiming that this is the same as the real part of an easier function, namely cosine of 1 plus eix. So, in other words, what I'm really saying is, I want to show that this function, if you expand it out into real and imaginary parts, you get this function. And now, let me, you know, as an aside, let me do that. It's a pretty complicated function. All right, so step, so y maybe. Okay. Take this function, right? Cosine of 1 plus eix. Well, let's expand eix in terms of real and imaginary parts. So this becomes cosine of, if you want, cosine of x plus 1 plus i sine of x. And again, here I use the fact that eix is cosine of x plus i sine of x. And the nice thing is, here you have a cosine of a sum. So let's just use the sum, ident sum law for cosine. So that's the same thing as cosine of cosine of x plus 1, cosine of sine of x. Sorry, co very important, cosine of i sine of x okay. minus, same thing with sine, so sine of cosine of x plus 1, sine of i sine of x. So again, that's just, you know, cosine of a plus b. That's cosine of a, cosine of b, minus sine of a, sine of b. And again, just like the double angle formula for cosine as cosine squared minus sine squared. That's why we have that. And we're actually almost done. 
All we basically need to show that this cosine I sine becomes cosh and this sine of I sine becomes sig, you know, plus or minus I or something. And let's do that because notice uh, cosine in general of I z, z is bad because it's complex, but in general, the definition of cosine for uh, complex numbers is e to the i z, so e to the i i z plus e to the minus i z over two, and that becomes e to the minus z plus sorry, mm, forgot an i here minus i i z. So e to the minus z plus e to the z over 2. But if you switch those around, you do get cosh of z. So in other words, this cosine of i sine z, that just becomes cosh of sine z. Just let z equals to uh, z equals to sine of x. And lastly, let's do the same thing, but with sine sine i z. It's the same thing as cosine, but here we put a minus sign and we divide by two i. So it's e to the i i z minus e to the i minus i z over 2i and that's e to the minus z minus e to the z over 2i all right and one thing you should know is that 1 over i if you multiply both sides by i you do get minus i so e to the minus z minus e to the z over minus over 2 times minus i. And in the end, you're left with, so e to the z minus e to the minus z over 2 times i, which is the same thing as sinh of z uh, times i. So in other words, this time with z equals to i sine of x, then this expression here, sine of i sine of x, just becomes i sinh of, uh, i sinh of sine of x. So, going back to this formula, we do get in the end that this thing becomes cosine of cosine of x plus 1 cosh of sine of x. And then remember we have this minus, minus i sine of cosine of x plus 1 sinh of sine of x. And if you're taking notes of something, this is exactly the expression we had at the beginning. And remember, what does this calculate? This just calculates cosine of 1 plus e to the ix. Okay. And you might be completely lost. What did we try to calculate? So let me tell you. So, so far, <laughs> just a little recap. What we had is that cosine of cosine of x plus 1 cosh of sine of x. We got that this is exactly the real part of cosine of 1 plus e to the ix. 
So now, what do we want to do? Instead of integrating this complicated function, we want to integrate this much easier function. Okay, well, much easier in parentheses, but the reason I'm saying this is because there's actually a nice formula that allows us to calculate this. And because we have, you know, a function of a constant plus e to the i something, there is actually a neat theorem, more, not only neat, a fundamental theorem in complex analysis that allows us to calculate integrals of those functions. And there's no other name for it than Cauchy's integral formula. Yep, Cauchy is back. So step two, Cauchy's integral formula In its general form, it says the following. It says that the value of f of a is equal to some integral. So 1 over 2 pi i integral over some contour z, c of f of c over z minus a dz. And again, absolutely fundamental because uh, uh, I don't want to say all of complex analysis relies on this, but I would say the second half of a complex analysis course relies on this. And by the way, okay, this is sort of like a, I want to say a fundamental theorem of calculus because this says integral of f equals to a value of f at a point. I guess more like a mean value formula. But you might say, hey, this does not look like this function at all, cosine of 1 plus e to the i x. But I'm claiming that in fact it does, because let's choose a very clever contour for this. So in particular, because you want e to the i x up here, let gamma of, I guess, x be the following contour, a plus e to the i x. And what this is really, and x is between 0 and 2 pi, what this is, it's really a circle of radius 1 centered at a, so this becomes gamma x if you want. It just goes counterclockwise that, that way. And the question is, how can we evaluate this contour where it's just like a substitution rule? So gamma prime of x, that becomes i e to the i x. And not only that, z minus a, well, that becomes gamma x minus a, but that's a plus e to the i x minus e to the minus a. And so this becomes much simplified it becomes e to the i x. And now let's take all this info and plug it into this integral. So what we get is that f of a equals to, we still have 1 over 2 pi i. Now, integral over this contour just becomes integral from a starting point to an ending point. So in this case, 0 to 2 pi, f of z, remember z was our contour. So f of a plus e i x, z minus a, z minus a, we calculated it to be e to the i x. And dz is really gamma prime x dx, so dz is gamma prime x dx, just like a substitution rule, which we found to be i e to the i x dx. And notice there is a huge cancellation party going on, because the e to the i x disappears, and also the i disappears. And so now we have our Cauchy integral formula, but 
in a way that's useful to us. Again, not that it's useless, it's very, very useful. So f of a is 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi f of a plus e to the i x dx. Now the question is, how in the world can we use this with our function? So this is our last step. Remember what we really want is integral from 0 to 2 pi cosine of 1 plus e to the i x dx. But you may say, hey, it looks very similar to this. Namely, let a be 1. And if you want f of z, be cosine of z. And so, if you take this and multiply it by 2 pi, you indeed get that the integral of cosine of this weird complex function is nothing else than 2 pi times f of 1, which is 2 pi times cosine of 1. And I'm claiming we're basically done because what we get is that the integral of this complex function is just 2 pi times cosine of 1. So let me summarize. Integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of 1 plus e to the i x dx is 2 pi. Let me put some space here because I want to put something here. Cosine of e plus i x equals to 2 pi cosine of 1. And the question is, how does this relate to our original thing? Well, remember, our original function is just a real part of this. So all you have to do is take real part of both sides. And assume you can put the integral outside the real part. But what you get from step very, very step one You get our original function back, integral from 0 to 2 pi, cosine of cosine of x plus 1 of cosh of sine of x dx equals to 2 pi cosine of 1. And not only that, again, amazing, but if you want to just take the imaginary part, then in fact, you also get the other integral, integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of cosine of x plus 1, singe of sine of x dx, equals to the imaginary part of this, which is 0. Pretty neat. Yes, thanks our buddy Koshi for finding this formula. And thank you Stack, Ex Stack Exchange for giving me this idea. And so if you like this integral and if you love complex analysis, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.